Yeah, thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, this talk will uh, take you on a journey of uh, the changing role of IT uh, within uh, a financial enterprise organization. Uh, how it changed from service-driven IT towards uh, strategy-driven IT. Um, who am I? Uh, my name is Mark Heistek. Uh, I'm a father of two and a sport fanatic. And at work I have the great opportunity to start uh, the DevOps transition uh, at ING uh, by organizing several DevOps days within ING, uh, performing on several IT conferences, talking about that. But also by breaking down several heavily shaped processes within ING and the last year specifically being part of a continuous delivery team. And therefore also be part of this whole journey in continuous delivery and DevOps. Um, in this talk I will cover uh, these topics. Some history of IT at uh, ING. Uh, where do we come from? What was the role of IT at ING? How did our organization uh, evolve towards a state of driven, strategy driven IT? How do uh, customers benefit of all this? And finally, where are we now concerning DevOps and continuous delivery? And what are we going to do in the near future? So I'm going to tell you uh, where we come from as IT. Um, to do so, I created some context. Uh, if we look at the first online initiatives um, to a broader public, like uh, the newspaper, uh, one was used to the paper version, and uh, an online newspaper was not really convenient. You had to start your PC, browse to the, to, uh, to the newspaper, maybe waiting for some to download some articles. But, well, it was there, and you had an alternative for your uh, paper version, filling out your text forms. Always done by paper, and uh, well, they came with an alternative. If you can do it online or send it via floppy, uh, but yeah, we, we were used to the old way of working, so we had little trust in um, in the uh, in the security of a computer program of the internet to send our text um, uh, information. But there was a possibility to use an IT-focused channel, buying tickets. Getting in line, get out of bed early, getting in line to the post office. If you were the first there, yeah, well, you, you probably had a ticket. But you also had the online uh, opportunity. And we look at the bank, and what about banking? Uh, fill out your transfer form, put them in an envelope, mail it, or bring it to your bank. Uh, easy does it. But there was also a possibility to do it at home without any paperwork. Back in these days, IT was a nice to have. It brought us an additional channel for doing our day-to-day -day business. But did we really care if we had some downtime or due maintenance windows? Well, we still had the alternatives. Which also uh, meant uh, our organization, like ING, didn't have to be very responsive for market changes. As market changes were mainly physical, changes with low uses of IT, so not that fast as well. Um, as seen in the examples, um, the usage of channels to reach people uh, was changing. IT got really involved from physical channels like a shop or a bank office towards uh, digital, digital channels like a web shop or internet banking. So move, let's move forward to the, to the banking example. It all started with the banking office. Uh, the office was the, the only point of contact with the bank. Uh, the, we called it the single channel. And it started, they started to change this. IT started to change this. Um, it was possible to offer more channels for the customers. Like still your good old bank office, uh, a voice response system uh, where you can call your bank and internet banking or home banking. That also means that customers are going to rely on the offered IT services. Uh, we got more and more used to it. But as said, it was mainly service driven and our organization was not very, very responsive. And uh, what does that mean? If we take a look at this slide, um, you see a triangle which you want to have in balance in order to deliver good IT services. 
you need competent people to do the work, you need a kind, uh, all kinds of processes to do your work in a controlled manner, like quality, security, maintenance, change processes, and you need proper technology to do your work, state-of-the-art hardware, development tools, etc. The focus of our servers-driven IT was mainly on people and processes. We tried, tried to outsource most of our IT services, and service level agreements, contracts, and maintaining these did the job within IT uh, perspective. For example, uh, ITIL and Prince, Prince2 processes were leading and not used as a way to do your work. So if you can see here, um, the focus did not include technology at all at that time. So here was a real sub-optimized or an out-of-balanced triangle. So, all about the service-driven, how did we go to strategy-driven IT? There was a need for change, that was clear, because customers had other demands and uh, were more expecting of a bank and IT of the bank. The distance between IT and business had been increased and we were more working more against each other than collaborating with each other. The focus of an IT <coughs> of the organization was on professionalization of um, IT and operations and less on the business or customer needs. As mentioned earlier, we tried to outsource a significant part of our activities. That was about nine years ago. Uh, this caused that the focus was mainly on organizing external activities, especially process control, and less on the execution of typical IT development and operations. Um, as you probably know, ING is a merge of Postbank and ING back in 2009, it happened. And during this merge, there were less investments in new systems. So the, the statement was, first migrate and then we will upgrade. To, and also to make the merge possible. So we were very busy as IT doing our own stuff. And meanwhile, meanwhile, our business wanted to uh, change. Of course, this created a huge gap. Uh, a gap between IT and business could uh, best be compared with the Grand Canyon. Because uh, neither had an idea why what the other was talking about, resulting in less collaboration to get great results for our customer. And besides our outsource activities, uh, merge activities and maintaining all systems, we had a legacy and bureaucratic organization. Changes easily took more than a year to implement. Uh, we were used to large and long projects like outsource activities. Uh, we were always trying to eat the whole elephant at once. And guess what? In the end, we were always over time, over budget, over scoped, and the gaps between the business uh, and IT kept growing because nobody was, nobody was happy, happy with the results and it never ended as planned. It was not the only gap in the organization. If we take a look in, uh, in IT, um, we also had a process-minded IT organization and uh, we are really changing the bank and running the bank. Uh, most of the communication between these two departments uh, were, uh, yeah, were captured in processes and procedures. For running the bank, we had all ITIL processes in place and we were very strict in following these processes. Uh, focus points were stability of the system. Within changing the bank, we had the PRINCE2 processes. And also, they were very strict to follow these. So performance uh, on this side was measured by release dates, resulting in the, uh, probably most of you know it, the wall of confusion. Uh, changing the bank had their deadlines and wanted to deliver as fast as possible. And running the bank did not have much control of what was getting over the wall and tried to regulate that. Uh, with uh, as much as possible and to mitigate any risks. So, and for operation is when, in the end, when there is a fire, it's their problem, not the dev problem, because it worked fine in dev, and now it's the other problem. So we had a huge problem with this uh, with this wall. 
And uh, so we uh, had a lot of challenges to deal with within the bank to, in, well, how to change this? How can we change this? How can we, what can we do? And then mobile banking got introduced within ING. Uh, a new way for our customers to do the banking and a great opportunity of ING to keep up with the competitors. Um, our competitors like ABN Emro had already a mature mobile banking app and they were way ahead of us. So, as we were used to work in large and long projects, we thought to create the best mobile app with all features the customers want, I think we think they want, and you can guess a project like that will probably take over a year, and even worse, we really tried it and failed. So we changed our way of working. We started to the development ourselves, just not outside ING, so we took it in. We created a minimal firewall product where you can check your balance, do a payment from your current account. The next feature in the mobile app was not a feature as wished by the business or IT, but as wished by the customers, based on their feedback. So uh, I believe uh, savings came in at that point. So we, we list, really listened to the customer. Sorry. Uh, so the start of developing in, in small steps like this to create uh, in the end a product uh, you uh, didn't think of before was a huge step in the way of working and really important. So following this success of uh, agile development, uh, of our mobile app, a big reorganization uh, had been announced. And uh, what was all this reorganization all about in, at ING? We created DevOps teams, 180 DevOps teams, uh, where teams became responsible for replication from the cradle to the grave, or as a very wise man ever told me, whoop to tomb. Thank you, Jamie. <laughs> the way of working in these teams was continuous delivery. So DevOps is the way to organize and the way we work is continuous delivery. As shown in the picture, you can see <clears throat> how we transferred from a waterfall to, towards continuous delivery. We first started with uh, Agile Scrum with some teams, but after that we still had a really long test cycle and a long deployment cycle done manually and also performed by other teams. And within uh, the DevOps teams we could do everything in one team. So you can add value each sprint if you want to, and you can change your scope if you want to. So having said this, um, let's have a summarize of what we've been through in our evolution of DevOps and continuous delivery. Uh, key in this is a management who wants to change, who want to change. And that's what happened in, the, uh, in 2009. And then we started our mobile app development, the first, screen, uh, first uh, Scrum team came up. Uh, they started Agile development, other, other teams followed that example. And somewhere in 2011 we started to automate full, our full IT processes, at least we, beginning of that. And then we had some discussion about production. Who's running production? Because you want to automate everything, you want to go to production without any checks. Well, well we automated your checks. So that was a good discussion, and then the reorganization followed in 2013. And now we are working on the first initiatives um, towards a private cloud. So if we go back to this circle, when I just mentioned earlier, we want to have it in balance to deliver proper IT processes. So what did it do? What did all this change towards a strategy-driven IT do with this uh, triangle. Well, technology is getting more involved, but we're, just, we're not, not there yet. Uh, we still have a lot of uh, challenge ahead, uh, because people needed to change their mind uh, set from uh, process minded towards engineering mind mindset. And uh, we didn't have all the technologies yet to facilitate uh, our developers and operations uh, guys. A nice story so far about our journey towards uh, strategy driven, but what's in it for the customer? Well, let me take you uh, into our mission uh, as ING 
is, is want, to, want to do now. We want to redesign to omni-channel, which is specifically uh, what the journey um, <clears throat> I have been taking so far and will bring the customer as well. We can redesign into omni-channel. Um, as an IT, we will be able to give this customer an omni-channel experience. So, what is omni-channel? I already explained. Eh, we, we single channel the bank off first, then we got multi-channel. So you see um, how did it evolves in time. Uh, years ago, uh, companies had just one channel, like the bank or your, or your shop, and then we uh, we got to uh, to work with multi-channel. And in case of uh, ING, that will be your uh, the ATMs, uh, mobile banking or internet banking. And um, these channels, in multi-channel, were working independent. And there was no collaboration between these channels. The next step is cross-channel. Uh, more collaboration and alignment between the channels. And this is the place where ING is at the moment. And we want to move to omni-channel. In omni-channel, we will get rid of all the borders between the channels. Customer data is stored centrally and anywhere, real-time, available. Uh, there are still different channels, but the customer experience is the same everywhere. Uh, the same look and feel, the same offers, the same functionality. For example, if you walk with your phone, you want to do a payment and your battery dies, you can easily start up your uh, internet banking and you can pick up the process and you can, can finish it. Or you have some issues with uh, your mortgage, you want to uh, have some advice. So you can walk into the bank, they will recognize you, they can pick up the process and easy does it. So the customer is central and the organization um, uh, is around the customer. So Omnichannel is nice, but why should we do it? We've got three reasons why to do Omnichannel as R&D. First of all, technical innovators have a huge impact uh, on customer behavior. Uh, and this changes uh, the customer behavior, of course. And uh, these customers also expect the same from a bank. Yeah? Uh, they expect another service. The second reason, it will bring great opportunities for a bank uh, and for a better relationship with, with your customer. And the third reason, it makes your organization much more efficient, so you can reduce a lot of costs. <coughs> so, now we're getting to the part, eh? uh, it's, one cannot just say, okay, let's do omni-channel, we can, we can start doing it. It has a huge impact on uh, both your organization and your IT. Uh, because we did invest in small steps, burning down silos, and shorten the feedback loop, we are able to make the change to omni-channel from our IT perspective. What the changes are, I will show you in the next slide, is uh, the impact is DevOps, you have to work in one team, uh, and you have, you're responsible for one uh, application. Create an agile organization or enterprise, and I will elaborate these later. And, of course, deliver fast against a high quality. Well, are we SIT ready for a channel? Well, I can say yes, but I couldn't find the me with almost. But uh, since we start from service-driven to strategy-driven IT, we are able to contribute the omni-channel journey uh, from an IT perspective. We really made uh, big improvements in the agile way of working and continuous delivery. So uh, we, we can start this journey towards omni-channel from an IT perspective. So where are we now and what will the future bring? Scale DevOps. Um, we started to work in uh, tribes. Who did hear? Who did hear from tribes? Well, that's quite a lot. All ING or not? <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, we copied that from Spotify. Uh, they've got a, this way of working, and what it does, a tribe uh, has an, uh, a purpose, and you work in from that from out that purpose. As you see, the the team in vertical. Those are called squads. And in a team uh, are uh, represented, well, people from, uh, 
people from uh, business and IT working in one team together. And the tribe lead, oh, I got a pointer. The tribe lead here defines the purpose. And the product owner here defines the priority within the team. And of course, and, and there's no hierarchy here from the tribe lead towards these teams. That's very important. The hierarchy is on a horizontal way. And it's more like coaching people, uh, helping them get better to deliver better products. So this is the organizational change we've gone through. So uh, we already started with DevOps and, uh, and this change has been done last June. And now we integrated uh, other IT parts in the teams. Scale continuous delivery. I want to elaborate this a bit more because this is where I work in the continuous delivery team. So how do we do continuous delivery at scale? This is the most, most important. Technique is one, but continuously learn and adapt. That's the most important thing to do. Uh, start your ideas, build, build your product, measure it, collect data, learn from it, and go over again in this lean cycle. And I want to do, to do it with three examples. Is uh, first, automation. What's the difference on team level and on enterprise level? And second, tools. Uh, inventing the wheel over and over again against standardization within your enterprise and security. Well, we all started uh, uh, to automate everything uh, because uh, at the reorganization we stated continuous delivery is the way to work and DevOps is the way we work. So it brought a huge enthusiasm within the teams and the first reac reaction was uh, we start, we're going to start all automate, let's do cool things. We were eager to start and use all kinds of tools and to create our uh, continuous delivery pipeline and learn from that as well. So this also resulted in doing cool things instead of adding direct value to your product. For example, there was a team uh, and they said, okay, what are you doing? Yeah, we're doing really cool things. Okay, what are you doing? Yeah, we're automating our IT processes. Okay, what did you deliver for the customer in the last six months? Yeah, well, one update. So uh, the, the focus was a bit shifting towards the, towards the automation of all the processes. And it was, I think, it was not bad because people started to learn what it's like to do continuous delivery. I think that's a good, a good, a good situation. <clears throat> but uh, we also, uh, it brought also a lot of many, uh, sorry, a lot of uh, continuous delivery pipelines, many tools, no standardization in the way of working, and um, Furthermore, there was no real collaboration between uh, teams to share their experiences. Everyone was inventing the wheel over and over again. So if I can summarize here. You can read it later. <laughs> and if we look at tools, um, what, what, it, what did it bring us? These are actually all the tools we used. 380 something for automating our work. So it uh, brings a lot of license costs as well as uh, a lot of maintenance. Um, so no, not a good life cycle management on the tools, etc. And if you do it in a team, you can do, uh, sorry, you can do it all yourself, uh, but how to maintain them? Should, shouldn't we standardize these? And if we look at security, uh, that's a nice one. Uh, if you work in a small team, you can work around security procedures and guidelines. Not ignore them, but work around it. So you make your continuous delivery pipeline work, and you work a little bit around it, and that's okay. But if you want to do it at scale in the enterprise, you really have to embed your security into your continuous delivery pipeline. Otherwise it wouldn't work, so bring them on your journey of automation and the agile way of working. So if we, um, how do we do this uh, in, at continuous delivery at ING? So I'm now going to tell a little bit more of a uh, um, continuous delivery pipeline we have. We start with the ideas, we got an ex a continuous delivery expert team collaborating with IT communities. That's really important because you have to have a community driven continuous delivery pipeline. Otherwise, you will do it from an ivory tower and no one will adopt it in the end. Um, our product is a standard continuous delivery pipeline for ING. 
Uh, we, will, we can measure that pipeline, I will tell a little bit more later. We collect it all, analyze it, present it to the IT engineers and managers, and so they can put on new feature requests uh, within the IT communities and change it. This is our continuous delivery pipeline. If you have seen the talk of Marta, you can see some similarities. See, draw this one. Um, you can see the, the, the pipeline, it's got continuous integration, generic deployment, continuous testing. But the most important I want to address is that we cut on top of, we cut metrics. We cut, uh, so that's what we did at ING. We used the normal continuous delivery practices, but on top of, we have this extra layer, uh, which can tell us about the behavior of the pipeline, pipelines for teams and releases. So it collects uh, data so we can learn and adapt with this part. <clears throat> so how do we do that? How can we control the pipeline? It's, uh, it's very easy. We created an event bus. We use Kafka for that. We got a Mongo database and we do uh, from there, I give a little, uh, some examples. We do system health monitoring. Uh, we automated our acceptance criteria. Uh, we were used to walk around with a big Excel list and check everything if everything has been done before you go to production or to acceptance environment. Uh, you can measure your team maturity, how many tests did succeed, how many did fail, etc. And uh, we can uh, do uh, test analytics. So we automated our uh, acceptance criteria. Uh, this is what it looks like. We call it iValidate. It's a, a self-designed tool where you can uh, Sit over there. I cannot, I cannot see it. As soon as everything has been green for your specific version, you're okay, okay to go to a next environment or to production. And what we cannot automate, you can adjust manually in this. That's for our toll gate list, a so called toll gate list. We also uh, measure out the system health of, uh, of our pipeline, so all the hardware middleware and application components within the continuous delivery pipeline we use, all the tools we use are constantly monitored and uh, we automated uh, alerts are generated whenever something goes wrong um, <coughs> well, that works fine now we use uh, uh, Elastic uh, Kibana and uh, Graphite for that and um, we have the automated team maturity here you can see some some tests, uh, so uh, for example we have run 140 tests, well this is a very good team, the other one as well. And uh, you can uh, measure your own performance as a team, uh, and your own code, etc. So you can learn from that and you can change your, your test scripts or uh, help people to train to, to, do, to, uh, to do a better job. Well. All this, uh, we, we're still working on this, still learning and adapting. And I want to go back one slide. This one is that <coughs> this is not just something we built and say okay, you can use it. Because uh, as said earlier, all the people started to create their own continuous delivery pipeline. But we had one team, it was doing very well. It was in our channels team. And they created a, a pipeline and already having 200 applications going through this pipeline. So we adopted that and now we are still going to change it to make it better. So also for the other teams to use it. And yesterday I saw an email, we got now 300 applications running to production with one single pipeline. So the teams can really add value to the product, use the pipeline, continuous delivery as a service, and then uh, go on with the work. And don't have to think about uh, uh, tools or learning all the new tools, etc. So, if we look at the uh, the triangle again, I think it, it's getting uh, from service driven towards now. It's getting more and more and more in balance because um, we really uh, will take care of our engineers. We want to have them. Uh, a great engineering experience. Uh, we tried it with some engineering desktop, so instead of these laptops, some are using the, the Apple books, and um, 
and yeah, we can help them out with everything. Uh, processes are still there because processes are the most important in doing your work, but it does not tell to, uh, how you, how to do your work. So processes are a, a real uh, important part of the of the software delivery process. And people really started away. I think that's the most that's the biggest uh, challenge we had away from the process mindset towards the engineering mindset. So, we're still not there. We are uh, still some, uh, some, cha some challenges coming up. We are working on a private cloud solution. Uh, infrastructure as code is coming up. We all already have some, uh, some experiences with that. And I think there will be a lot of new ways to do continuous delivery in the future. So uh, what we have here, a pipeline, maybe it, if I stand in next year, it's totally different. So if we go to the, to the recap of this presentation. As we can see, we started as a service-driven IT. Uh, we were not responsive enough to react on the market changes from an IT perspective. And, uh, with the introduction of mobile banking, it changed. Uh, we, we were able to make small steps. We got used to the agile way of working. We started to learn and adapt. Uh, but it's also a cultural change, and that's the most important. It takes time. It doesn't say, okay, here you got a product, just use it, and you do continuous delivery in DevOps. It takes time, because people need to get used to it. And another thing, get rid of silos. Stop working together, stop talking. So, in the end, be like a flock of birds. Make sure you can adapt as an enterprise, as an agile enterprise, to adapt to all kinds of circumstances. Well, that's, uh, that's about it. Any questions? I saw a hand over there. I just, I, I don't the mic is over there. What's the question? No, it's not. <laughs> Still has to be asked. You're in finance. How do you do security at speed? Security at speed? Um, yeah, we thought of a lot about that, how to do it. Uh, it's uh, the most simple answer is. Um, Bring them on your journey. Talk about it. How can you, how can we use the security guidelines in an agile way? That's that's it. Yeah. Collaboration is the key. Uh, any more questions? Yeah. Someone over there. Sorry. Sorry, I'm first. We'll come back. I I was um, wondering. As a bank, you probably have a lot of legacy systems and legacy code. And how do you actually uh, address that moving to continuous delivery where you probably have no automated testing and all that? Can you elaborate a bit on that? Yeah, um, still a lot of legacy. We still do the old fashion way of working. And we try to move from the legacy so we can also develop agile on those systems. So get rid of mainframe, for example, things like that. But it does, does not fit in this continuous delivery pipeline. And I, th I also think you shouldn't do it. Because it's too much of work. But sometimes you need a hybrid situation, right? Maybe you have something like a messaging bus or something where you just publish messages from old systems or something like that. Yeah, change the messaging bus, you can use continuous delivery. In that case, you just automate your IT processes. And the other way, you do still on the old way, on the old fashioned way, manually. Yeah. Right, thank you. Okay, there's another one. So, yeah, the... uh, I looked at GitHub and I don't see any commits from you, any project you uh, open source. And uh, I see many people who say that big companies should have people working on open source projects. Did I look wrong or is there no policy for ING Bank? Um, <laughs> there is a policy. I think my colleague is over oh, there. Guys. Um, it's, uh, for the organization, it was also a bit of a struggle. Can we open source, for example, own tools? Or can we uh, um, participate in open source communities? 
um, uh, we can do. So we start we, we starting with that. And uh, we got a policy now, and I don't know it by heart, but uh, Thijs, can you elaborate? Sorry? We have a location on public gazette. Okay. Uh, we have the uploaders that much against Okay, yeah, well, we're in the, in the start of that. Yeah, but we are moving towards that uh, open source community thinking. Yeah. Any more questions? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. She could have screaming instead of hands. Hi. Hi. I wanted to ask how was the conversation with the rest of the uh, company when you decided to? Say no, we are gonna automate processes now. We are gonna take that time, you know. In one year, we are just gonna launch one update. What was the conversation like? Um, uh, yeah, in the beginning was hard because you need to convince what it will bring. You need to invest first, and then you will earn it later. And then uh, we just do it, and we showed it, and then uh, they were convinced. That's a bit of a short answer. <laughs> <laughs> so I was going to say. We've got a lot of discussions. We've got a lot of discussions about that. But yeah, you have to, you need to invest, and then it, you will you will it will return. Any things to sell? Because you were selling. Yeah. Um, uh, showcases. Yeah. So also do something without uh, uh, involving other parties, and then show it, and then you can sell it. Yeah. And now it's easier to sell because a lot of companies do it. There was someone screaming over here. Yes, it was you, sir. Very manly scream, if I may add. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, one question is a bit less serious. Uh, are you planning to translate your uh, web page into English at some point? <laughs> Just, <laughs> like the competition? <laughs> That's a good one. And there is another one, which maybe relates to the question from the first row. Uh, are you planning to do some kind of open API in the future? Because I know that there were some, maybe not plans before, but you did some, at least uh, I read you did some test in France two years ago or so. Yeah, I, I don't know, but there are some. Sorry, it doesn't relate to no, the but, at all. But. Uh, do you know? Two thousand sixteen we will start with it. With the translation or with the No, the <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with translation. Welcome to IG. Thank you, Alex. Thank you. Um, okay, time for one more question, I think. Anyone? Yeah. Oh, in the back, of course. <laughs> So the guys at Netflix were friendly enough to show their uh, HR practices to the whole world and one of them was that the process, aka red tape, uh, scares away your best people. So uh, I can imagine the bank is riddled with red tape. How do you avoid the process um, scaring away the good people again in IT? Red tape is if you're not performing, you... No, you have all kinds of rules and forms to put yourself live, etc. Okay. Things to adhere to. I don't know. Uh, we don't have such thing. We try to hire the best people at the moment, uh, give them a big challenge to work in a great environment. I mean, I don't know anything about red tape things. So. <laughs> Incredible political answer there at the end, thank you. Uh, can we get one more big round of applause for Mark Hasbeck, please?